Hello everyone. Welcome to this video series on database management systems. So in the previous video, I have explained about dynamic SQL, and in this video, we are going to look at triggers and active databases. First, we will look at what is a trigger, how to create the trigger, and how to use the trigger, and then finally, we will see what is meant by an active database. Okay. Uh, so first of all, what is a trigger is uh, you can think of trigger as some code, okay, uh, which is written uh, using the syntax of SQL, and this code executes um, at some particular point which you specify in the trigger while creating the trigger. So all of you know about DML statements in SQL, right? Insert, update, and delete. So if you want to execute some code before or after executing insert, update or delete commands, the thing you can use is a trigger. Okay, so whatever code you are writing inside the trigger, this is going to execute before or after executing insert, update or delete commands. Okay, right. Now let's see. So. A trigger is a set of SQL statements, as I told you, some code which will be residing or stored in system memory. Okay, by system memory, I mean RAM. Okay, so whenever the DBMS starts, it's, it will load all these triggers which you have created into RAM. So if you are creating more and more triggers, all that code is stored in RAM. So RAM will be filled up. Okay. So take care that your triggers are uh, minimum. Okay. So without any use of triggers, don't use triggers. Mm, of course, uh, the RAM is now very large in GBs like 16 GB etc. But even though, don't use triggers if there is no use for them. Okay. Now trigger is a type of stored procedure. So stored procedure means. Uh, if you know C, C++, Java or any other programming language, we should be knowing the concept of functions, okay? So you can consider as, uh, you can consider a function as a stored procedure, okay? Piece of code, right? And uh, to what this trigger is going to be associated is, it is going to be associated with the table and the trigger will be activated or you can say invoked are executed or you can say triggered on DML statements like insert, update or delete. Okay. Right. Now, what's the difference between a stored procedure and a trigger? So the main difference between trigger and stored procedure is trigger is called automatically. Okay. You don't need to call it. So all of you know about functions, right? After creating the function, you need to call call the function. Here, after creating the trigger, there is no need to call the trigger. It is going to be uh, executed automatically. Whereas if you consider a stored procedure, it is like a function. After creating the stored procedure, you have to call it to execute. Okay? Right. Now, types of triggers. There are two types of triggers. One is row level triggers, another one is statement level triggers. So by the name, as the name itself signifies, the row level triggers are going to execute um, row, row by row. That is whenever you insert, update or delete a row, one row. Okay. And statement level triggers, these things are associated with set of rows or you can say a complete transaction. For example, uh, in a table, you have inserted 100 rows, okay, at a time. So after inserting 100 rows, you have to check for something. That is the thing where you need a statement level trigger, okay, right. And if you take MySQL, MySQL supports only row level triggers, right, okay. Now, what is the need for triggers? When do, when do you require triggers or you can say all of these things also as uh, advantages or uses of triggers, okay? Uh, first thing is triggers helps us to enforce business rules, okay? Mm, 
that is uh, your requirements so your program is going to have some requirements right so if those requirements require trackers you can use them that is this enforcing business rules and the second one is triggers helps us to validate data okay that is even before the data is inserted or updated right okay and third one is triggers helps us to keep a log of records now what is this log of record means for example uh, many people use uh, your database and your database has so many tables and lot of people will be inserting updating and deleting the rows from the tables and you you want to know when a particular row is inserted when a particular row is updated when a particular row is deleted okay for such case whenever these operations are happening you can store uh, the timestamp and the username who is performing the action in a separate table or in a separate file so this thing is called as keeping a log of records for maintaining audit trails audit means checking okay after something has happened if you want to check who is doing what that is that thing is called as audit okay next one is uh, SQL triggers provide a way to enforce integrity of data. So this is based on this one. I already told you it is used for validating data. So that thing is known as checking the integrity of data, whether the data is complete and correct, right? And one advantage of triggers is it is used to reduce client side code. Okay, so triggers are stored on server side. So since triggers are used for validation, there is no need to use validation code on client side, right? And last one is triggers are easy to maintain. Okay, right. So there are also some limitations of triggers. So first limitation is it, it is not able to check all kinds of validations. For example, not null, check foreign key, etc. So it is not going. It is not able to check all this validations right and triggers are invisible to the client application okay so why is this a disadvantage or limitation because whenever the user is executing the web application and the trigger throws an error that error is not shown to the user okay only the server side can know what is the error being caused and the client will be uh, very sad or frustrated because the client or user does not know what is happening okay and last one is triggers may increase overhead on database servers so in the beginning i told you now where is the where, where is the code for trigger stored um, the code for triggers is stored in ram so if you are using more and more triggers the ram will get filled up and the processing on the CPU will be increasing. Okay. Right. Now, how to create a trigger in MySQL DBMS? So you can create the trigger like this. First, you will write create trigger. These are keywords. Then you will write the trigger name, whatever trigger name you want. And then you will write one of these keywords either after or before. Okay. And then you will write any one of these three keywords either insert or update or delete right and then you will write on keyword and then table name on what table you want to create the trigger and the keywords for each row okay then your code variable declarations and the trigger code you will write here in between begin and end okay so the syntax is little bit difficult but follow okay so here is trigger example so as i told you in the previous slide create trigger and this is the trigger name okay i have written a lengthy trigger name but you can write a short trigger name like a b c x y z something like that so the name should be meaningful right so i am writing the name as before insert emp cell ok 
okay and then i am using the keyword before before the dml statement insert on the table name is employees for each row begin and the conditions or the code i have written here is if this is a keyword okay new new means if you see here the dml statement i am inserting is insert okay the dml statement i am using is insert so insert command means we are going to insert new values right that those new values are referred by this new okay and this is the column name this is the column name in this table employees okay so if the new salary value is less than or equal to zero then set new dot sal equal to ten thousand and i am writing end if okay so this thing is an if condition right and this is inside the body of if right so what i am doing in this line is if the user is giving the salary value as less than or equal to zero some negative value or even zero then automatically set the value salary value to 10000 okay so what we are what we are trying to enforce here is the minimum salary of any employee should be 10000 not less than 10000 okay right so here is the trigger creation in mysql so please take care before writing the trigger you should write this one delimiter okay double back backslash right delimiter double backslash okay so if you don't give this you can't write the trigger line by line like this in mysql command form you will not be able to write like this okay so create trigger this is the trigger name like like i have shown you in the previous slide before insert on employees for each row begin if new dot cell less than equal to zero then set new cell equal to ten thousand and if end and you finally close this trigger with double backslash so this is the purpose of this delimiter okay now see here i am executing or using the trigger here so if you see i am writing an insert query right so i have written the trigger for insert insert okay so i am testing using insert so insert into employees values so i am giving some values you see this one i am giving salary as zero okay i am giving salary as zero and i am executing this query so if you see here it's 11 this is the row i have inserted and if you see the salary salary is 10000 and it is not zero okay salary is 10000 and it is not zero so how did this zero become 10000 because of trigger so this is what i am doing here so if the salary is anything less than or equal to zero set the value or salary as 10000 okay so that's all so this is an example of trigger how to create the trigger and how to execute or invoke the trigger right i hope all of you have understood okay and this completes uh, module 3 in dbms so let's see what we have learned in dbms and the outcomes so students should be able to describe what is relational algebra and what are the difference or different operators that are used in relational operator uh, relational algebra and also you should be able to write queries using the operators which belong to relational algebra and then we should know about different types of sql languages like ddl dml dcl tcl etc and you should be able to write some basic sql queries like select query okay create alter drop hmm, insert update delete etc etc and then uh, you should be able to write sub queries and also you should be able to use aggregate operators like average sum 
min, max, etc. And you should be able to use the group by and also having clauses, right? And then you should be able to describe what is a trigger and write simple triggers, which we have seen in this video. And you should be able to describe what is embedded SQL and what is dynamic SQL. And finally, you should be able to list different JDBC drivers and you should be able to explain them. Okay, this thing I am not uh, uh, explaining you because it is already covered in the previous semester in Java, Java object oriented programming through Java. So you should be able to already do this. So that's why I am not, not teaching you that now. So that's it, guys. This is the end of module 3. Uh, hope all of you understood all these concepts. So please like the video and subscribe to my channel for latest notifications. And if you have any doubts or any requests, you can comment below the video. Thank you.